Hey friends, welcome back. This is a video about the gear that I use. Earlier this week, I was on the phone with my mom and she said, Josh, I love your videos. I like it when you and Katie go out look for birds. I love all the mountain trips you guys make, but I just can't handle the gear talk. And I get it, some of you guys can't handle the gear talk. For those of you that want to share in one of those adventures, I'm going to put a link to one of my favorite videos right here. Maybe we'll see you next time. However, I know a lot of you guys love talking about gear. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the comments I get or inquiries are specifically about gear. Questions like, Josh, what do you recommend? Josh, uh, I'm thinking about getting this camera. Have you ever shot it before? I am glad to answer those questions. The fact is we need gear to get good shots. What triggered this video is that Katie and I were out on a little adventure this weekend. We packed up the truck with all the camping gear, we set up the tent, and we waited for nightfall to come so that we could find kangaroo mice. Interesting fact about kangaroo mice, they just don't come out during the day. So we found out real quick that photographing or getting video of things at night was extremely difficult. And that, in turn, brought me back home looking for little tools that I can use to get footage at night. I say all that to say this, gear is fun, it's cool to have new toys, but for me, now that I'm doing YouTube, most of the gear that I have is because I have a specific need and I go out looking for that tool to help accomplish that job. Do I go a little crazy sometimes? Absolutely. Do I have a kind of a lust for gear? Absolutely. I like nice things. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, sit back. We're gonna dive right into it. And uh, let's talk about the gear that I use. Okay, friends, full disclosure. I do have a couple of pieces of gear that were given to me, specifically uh, Viltrox, a wonderful company that has now sent me a 35 millimeter 1.8 and a 50 millimeter 1.8, which I'm shooting on right now for this video. Fantastic lenses. Uh, if I would have known about Viltrox sooner, I'd have been buying Viltrox products. Uh, that 50 millimeter 1.8 is half the price of the Nikon Z mount lens, and their 35 millimeter lens is half the price of the Nikon 35 millimeter. And it's fantastic. I haven't had any problems with their products. I just wanna let you guys know that they were given to me for free and I use them all the time. Uh, the second thing is KNF filters. They send me stuff and I love using their products. I have a 55 millimeter variable ND filter on this 50 millimeter lens. That's a lot of numbers right there. So KNF and Viltrox, they send me stuff for free and I love their products and I highly recommend that you use them as well. In addition, I am a partner with our friends over at Hunt's Photo and Video. Although they're not sponsoring this video, they help a lot of uh, these things come to pass. Uh, I wanna make a recommendation that you go down into my description, check out the pricing sheet that we have. Uh, Noah, who's a good friend of mine over at Hunt's Photo and Video, helped put it together. Not only does he have a list of all the equipment, he has specific discount codes that you can get just by using that price sheet. And not only that, my favorite part is he put his personal email and you can contact him directly. Hunt's Photo and Video is a fantastic company. What I love most about them is that they are customer service centered. Every time I call, I get someone on the phone. If I don't get Noah specifically, Noah will call me back quickly. He answers his emails. I get updates on all of my equipment and I'll be using them for a long time. Okay, enough of that, let's talk about the gear. Let's dive right into the cameras. As a lot of you may know, I'm a Nikon shooter, and specifically the Nikon Z9 has become my main uh, weapon of choice. The Nikon Z9, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of this camera, but it is the first professional camera that I bought brand new. Holy smokes, I absolutely love it. Long battery life, quick autofocus system, 20 frames per second, I love everything about this camera. Coming from the Z6 and the Z6 II, this is a huge step up, great for wildlife, great for action. And if you're waiting for yours, it is worth the wait, guys. It is 100% worth the wait. Hang in there, fantastic camera. This will probably be my main camera for the next 10 years. Okay, but let's talk about the real workhorse. The day I started my YouTube channel, within that first week, I went out and bought a Nikon Z6, a mirrorless camera, my first mirrorless camera ever, and I see no reason to upgrade it. Uh, this Nikon Z6 has been 
on every video I've done. It captures the B-roll, it's captioned uh, me talking into it right now. I've got a Nikon Z6 II up on the tripod. Fantastic 4K video. The color of the video when it comes straight out of camera is almost perfect. I barely have to do anything to it. If you're looking for a good hybrid camera, the 24 megapixel sensor and the Z6 II is fantastic. These cameras are in my bag, on my tripod, wrapped around my shoulders at all times. Highly recommend the Nikon Z6 and of course the Z6 II. Let's dive off into the lenses. Of course, when I started my YouTube channel, I had a big Nikon 600 millimeter F4. I started to realize that's a rather cumbersome lens, but within the last couple of months, I've sold the Nikon 600 millimeter F4 and I've gone with the 500 millimeter PF lens. This is an extremely light lens at only three to three and a half pounds very sharp. The only downfall with this lens is that it is a 5.6, which means when the light gets a little bad outside, you might have to shoot at some higher ISO, but I haven't seen that as being a big problem. So my main wildlife lens, carry this with me around my shoulder, uh, 500 millimeter PF, fantastic lens. Recently, I was asked if you could keep just one lens, what lens would it be? Most of you might think that it would be a bird lens. However, I quickly responded that it would be the 105 macro lens. I've had a macro lens from the first month I started photography. The 105 macro is absolutely fantastic. Not only is it a good sharp lens for macro, it's a triple threat. You get macro, you can do portrait photography, and I even use this 105 as a landscape lens. This is the new Z mount S macro 105 2.8 it is so much lighter than the older copy i can't wait for spring to get here i can't wait to photograph bees and flowers i absolutely love using a macro lens i will always from now until the day i stop doing photography will have a macro lens in my bag years ago i was out shooting some landscape photography with a friend and he had an old f mount 20 millimeter 1.8 he let me borrow it for a short time and i absolutely fell in love a wide angle fast lens is awesome. This lens is sharp from edge to edge. The distortion isn't bad at all, and it's great for nighttime photography because it's a 1.8. It lets in a lot of light. The 20 millimeter 1.8 is my favorite landscape lens. I love taking this out when I go to places like Yellowstone, when I go back into the mountains. Not only that, it's also good lens for vlogging. You don't have to hold it too far away from your face. Great all around lens. As soon as Nikon announced that they were gonna release that Z mount lens, uh, I put my name on the list. I had to have it. Let me introduce you to another workhorse in my collection and that is the Nikon 24 to 70 F4. This is the lens that typically stays mounted on my video camera or the Z6 or Z6 II that gets B-roll, it gets all of the footage of me and Katie out there photographing the birds. A lot of folks have asked me would I recommend the 24 to 70 2.8 over the F4 and the answer is emphatically no. The 24 to 70 F4 is all that I need. We can't talk about cameras and lenses without talking about the drone. I am a DJI Air 2S drone user. This has been a fantastic drone. I bought the Flymore kit, which gives me extra batteries, and it gives me those ND filters. 4K video flying robot that tracks me around, gives me great, cool, epic scenery shots. Drones are cool. And I am a uh, licensed drone pilot, and I want to encourage any of you that are interested in flying drones, go ahead and get your license. You learn a lot. Not only that, you're legal and you can download apps like the air map and there's other variable apps out there that help you understand when you can fly when it's safe to fly flying a drone is fun the dji is the go-to drone air 2s 4k fantastic product moving along friends i'm going to geek out just a little bit uh, this is stuff that most of you photographers are not going to use but if you're a videographer you're going to learn very quick that sound matters when I first started my YouTube channel, my sound was garbage. I honestly need to go back and delete probably 50% of my videos because the sound quality is so bad. Therefore, I made the investment in some good, high-quality external recorders. Right now, I am recording through the Zoom H6 Handy Recorder, and the reason I'm using that one is it has a nice clean out and it easily mounts onto my tripod. When I need some real high-quality stuff and I want 32-bit float, which doesn't clip, and I don't want to 
nerd out on that too much. I use the F6. This is specifically used out in the field when I'm getting stereo sounds or some of those nature sounds. High quality external recorder. Zoom makes a great product. Uh, this year, I kind of call this my year of sound. I want to get better at it. And it's hard to get better at sound if you don't have the right equipment. You can't pick up the good sound if you don't have the good microphones. Once again, part of my struggle from the beginning was I had crappy microphones. I started with the internal microphones on the cameras. Garbage. Don't ever do that. Your sound is going to sound... Uh, you know what it sounds like. It's tinny. It's gross. I've gone through several microphones. I started with the Video Mic Go by Rode. Uh, it's pretty good. Not the best. Uh, I recently upgraded to the Video Mic NTG, which has a little power system inside of it. Gives it a little more gain, much cleaner. Uh, that's probably the best Rode mic uh, with a 3.5 millimeter jack. This one's about $250, but the top of the line sound that I get comes out of this boy right here, which is the NTG5, and that's an XLR shotgun microphone, and that's what I primarily put into the Zoom F6, and I get all those cool bird sounds. Microphones are important, guys. Microphones make or break your videos. Nobody wants to stick around for horrible sound. Getting all this equipment around is a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details of the little specific pieces that I use, but there is the one thing that I do want to cover just a little bit, and that is the F-stop bags. I have not, prior to buying this bag, found a bag that I liked even a little bit. I get more aggravation from camera bags than just about any piece of equipment, period. Until I found the F-stop bag. The F-stop bags are built tough. They're comfortable on your back. They have waterproof zippers where you need them. Where you don't need waterproof zippers, it has big heavy duty zippers. I opted for the large insert. I don't carry big equipment in that bag. I don't put my 500 millimeter lens and I don't put the Z9. However, all of my extra lenses go in there along with some sound recording devices and it's comfortable. I can walk with that thing for miles and it's a fantastic bag. Bad camera bags can be, they can make your life miserable, but a great bag like the F-Stop Tilopia 50 liter, Tilopa, Tilopa? I don't know how you pronounce it. 50 liter is a fantastic bag. Enough good stuff. Let me share with you a couple of items that I just don't really care for. First and foremost are gimbals. I bought this Ronin RS2, I'm sorry, SC2. I saw so many cool videos of these YouTubers out there making all this great footage. I'm just gonna say it. I absolutely struggled with this thing. The little bit of footage I did get took me 30, 40 minutes of setting it up and experimenting. I had to go back into editing and really get everything right. Gimbals just don't work with my workflow. Is this a bad product? Probably not. It's probably user error and I will I will certainly own that. But the fact is if it's something that doesn't work in for me in my workflow, typically means I'm gonna be getting rid of it. So bottom line, gimbals, they're great for some people, doesn't work with my workflow. This will probably be going back. One more piece of advice, a lot of guys use those external radio microphones like the Rode or DJI and some of those other off-brand Ceramonic. I tried those, they just don't work for me. That's another thing that requires a lot of setup. Sure, you can talk 50 yards away from the camera with it. Lav mics and radio mics are a no-go for me. Friends, it's gonna be an exciting year. Katie and I have plans to go to Alaska. Uh, we'll be in Yellowstone several times this year, Grand Teton National Park. Uh, we'll be exploring Idaho. Hopefully we'll get to the Oregon coast. Not too long in the near future, we plan on heading down to Southern Arizona for the bird migration there, hopefully in the fall timeframe. It's gonna be a fun year. I hope I have all the equipment I need uh, to make videos that are pleasing to you guys. Thank you guys for coming along. It's been a fantastic ride, and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Thanks again.